What's up? What's up, folks? All right. Right in front of me is my 7-inch quad. The specs are... That's a Speedy B uh, version 3. I think it's F7. Couldn't remember anymore. That's a Cadex Vista. And then... The frame is an iFlight, iFlight uh, 7 inch frame, and I forgot the name of the, the antenna for the video, yeah right there, okay. This one here, the one wrapped in, in styrofoam and a wooden stick, that's, a, that's the antenna for the ELRS Foxeer 2.4 gigahertz with LNA receiver. What else did I miss? And I've got a $29 GPS module here. I think it's $29. And it's quick. Uh, it can grab 10 satellites in less than 30 seconds it's fast I like it it has never failed me the motor is a broader hobby I believe it's it's Avenger let's see yeah it's Avenger 2806 point five thirteen hundred KV yeah anyways I'm not here to talk about the 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 quad all right but it's nice to give you an idea what what drone i'm actually flying in my long range i want to talk more about the the elrs as well as the video antenna specifically the placement back in the days when i started FPV in 2019 I didn't care about how things are mounted where parts are actually placed I just like uh, okay this looks good here I'll keep it here that's how I was back in the days but in the past year or two I've been I've been thinking about, uh, okay, where do I place this? Because I encountered this issue during flight. Now, if you see the ELRS and the video antenna, most of you are doing this. It's at the very back. And then this is a, this is a good design good implementation especially the 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 angle of the camera is almost like 40 degrees all right it's like this so when the quad is flying against me further or facing away from me if it goes up goes up and up and up and up the antenna is way top there at the very end of the quad I don't have any issues right right now that Fox here LNA only has one um, one uh, antenna input the UFL connector it's not a diversity so that means if let's say I'm flying low like maybe 10 15 meters above the ground and the quad is facing me this antenna design or position or location is fine right well if you are let's say cruising mountains and you're bringing back the quad to you this design now becomes a problem why what's the height of mountains or buildings they're like 
1,000 feet, 2,000 feet, 3,000 feet high, right? So now, if let's say our quad is way back there, 1,000 feet, look, can you see the, can you see the antenna? No, not anymore. That becomes a problem. Our quad, specifically the flight controller, can signal a stage one fail safe. It can trigger GPS rescue. So what's the solution? Pitch it much more forward than now. What's gonna happen? You get you get more signal from the antenna in the video, but you're going down, right? Which you don't want. Especially in this position, let's say you're diving a mountain or a building. Look at the position of the antenna. It's now almost parallel to the ground. And our antenna on the receiver is vertical. Now you're causing a null. Um, there's a null point in our antenna, which means we're not going to get any signals. There's, there's going to be an RX loss. So, this antenna, this antenna position is okay. Well, the perfect solution to this is either fly like this, <laughs> which is weird, right? I think that's what I did in one of my flights. Or another much more better way is to have a diversity receiver where you have two antennas. So now when you design, when you place your antenna, you don't just mount it there and start flying. Nope, it's, it doesn't that, it, it's not done that way. Maybe if you're just flying within 500, 500 meters, that's fine. You're flying in, in like open areas, fields, um, th those antenna, even if it's short, it's fine. It's okay. It's still strong, but not when you're doing long range flights. So for the, for a diversity, what you need to do, this is my, this is my design thinking. When I, when I think about locations, I think about the place where I'm flying and the things that I'm gonna do. I'm gonna dive and when I dive, look at the antenna. It will cause a null. So that means I'll have, I'll have to buy a better receiver like the diversity and then I'll mount it this way. I'll keep it that way, the one with the wood right now. Plus, I'm gonna mount the other antenna like this, like my finger. Now it's vertical. This is the one I'm talking about. I have two antennas. This one will take over because it's gonna be vertical. It will have a stronger, stronger signal rather than this one. So yeah, guys, when, when you're building, when you're designing your quad, don't just mount it, okay? I'm going to include a screenshot or a picture of um, antenna, antenna positions where, um, where it shows ideal positions and bad positions. It'll be in the description. All right. Yeah, it doesn't matter for like short range, uh, mid range. Uh, I'm only talking about... Um, like when doing long range flights. Yeah, guys. Uh, so far, I'm still happy with this setup. Uh, it really works well. I love it a lot. And, and you'll ask me, why did you put styrofoam around the, that thing? Okay. If you'll notice, you won't find the receiver in between the, the the top plate and bottom plate, it's not there. The receiver, the Fox Seer ELRS receiver is right here inside. It's covered by a half inch thick 
styrofoam because it doesn't have any temperature controlled crystal oscillator in here in where I live we have temperatures like winters sometimes it goes down to like negative 20 and negative 10 like the other day was negative 5 and I can't stay home you know I love flying so I don't care if I'm outside and flying I'd like to put this quad to its limits so having that styrofoam actually helps the the receiver since it doesn't have any TXCO and without TXCO um, with with a, just a basic crystal oscillator you will encounter fail safes yeah so that's that's what it does it will help a lot okay I did I put the mount in such a way sorry not the mount, a styrofoam in such a way that the cold air will be prevented from entering the receiver yeah it's nice and and the tel telemetry TNSR was actually showing the value it was negative 4 dB versus the RSNR which is negative 22 dB which is still good so so the negative 4 that's putting out a lot of power maybe because it's hot that's based from my bench test yeah alrighty guys uh, I, I hope you enjoyed this session all the things I shared so, you know I there's nothing I can there's nothing I can benefit if I keep the knowledge I love sharing knowledge guys and I want you to hear it so that way you will have successful flights and then avoid issues that I encountered before alrighty guys I hope you had fun listening to my my testimony about um, implementing design antennas I mean implementing uh, the way you should mount your antennas alrighty guys later